Okay, so if you are learning algebra, this is a pop quiz question that you should be able to answer successfully. And the question is the following. What is the discriminant and why is it so important? And here is a clue. It has something to do with this thing right here. Okay, so if you know the answer to this question, go ahead and put that into the comment section. And then this video is going to fully explain the answer because we do need to discuss a few things because this is a big, important topic in algebra. Now, if you never heard of this word discriminant, uh, there is a chance that maybe you have not yet studied this. Uh, this is a topic that uh, you should see you know, definitely in like well, your first year algebra courses, certainly your second year, like uh, courses like Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus. But uh, maybe if you're like in pre-algebra, you probably will not yet uh, uh, study the discriminant. But stick around anyways, because you will definitely learn something. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what is the discriminant? Why is it so important? Well, again, it has something to do with this thing. And what is this thing right here? And if you said, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that is the quadratic formula. Well, indeed, that is correct. And I have to give you a happy face because that's what this thing is. It's the quadratic formula. Now, this is an absolute must-know uh, formula in algebra. And if you're not familiar with the quadratic formula, then chances are, again, you probably are taking some sort of course like pre-algebra. But if you are taking a first-year algebra course, this is a critical formula. You must master it. And let's talk about it because we have to understand the quadratic formula a little bit before we answer this question about what is the discriminant. All right, so what is the quadratic formula? Well, the quadratic formula allows us to solve any quadratic equation. Now, uh, not to kind of go off on a tangent, but when we have a quadratic equation, something like this, there are uh, different techniques that we can try to apply to solve this equation, okay? Now, again, this is a big uh, separate topic. Actually, the study of quadratic equations, quadratic functions, is typically a whole unit, a whole full chapter uh, in most algebra courses with at least like six or seven different sections in, uh, you know, in that chapter. So this is a big, big topic. But in general, uh, when you have a quadratic equation, you can always solve it using the quadratic formula. Okay. So uh, if you don't know what a quadratic equation is, very uh, uh, in a real kind of simple terms, it is a second degree polynomial equation. In other words, the highest power of the uh, variable in this equation is 2. And that indicates to us that there uh, will be two solutions. Okay, this is another very important thing uh, in algebra, something called the fundamental theorem of algebra. But that basically states is whatever the highest power is of your polynomial equation, and here we have a second degree polynomial equation. By definition, this is a quadratic equation. This is how many solutions uh, we will have. Now, what type of solutions? Well, uh, that is what we're going to be talking about in just one second. But uh, let's go over here and let's suppose that we wanted to solve this quadratic equ uh, equation using the quadratic formula. Well, in order to do that, we need to make sure that this equation is written in what we call standard form and that is highest to lowest power. So in other words, we have our x squared here, we have x here, and then we have our number here, So, and this is equal to zero. This equation is written in standard form. Now, once you have a, um, an equation, a quadratic equation written in standard form, what we're gonna do is look at the coefficients. These are the numbers in front of the variables. So the five here, okay, that's what we call our leading coefficient. This is our leading term, but this is going to be our a um, in the quadratic um, uh, formula. Okay, in other words, the leading coefficient, the number in front of the x squared or y squared doesn't make a difference, is going to be what a is going to be equal to. Okay, so ax squared plus bx plus c, this is what we call 
a quadratic equation written in general form uh, or general quadratic equation written in standard form, excuse me. Okay, but here a is going to be equal to 5, and then the number in front of the x term, okay, or the linear term, or the term that's to the first power, this is what b is equal to, so here b would be equal to 3, and then c is always our constant value, so in this case c would be equal to 7. Okay, so we have uh, a is equal to 5, b is equal to 3, and c is equal to 7, so uh, we can solve this quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula right here. So we're gonna plug in these various um, a, b, and c values into the formula. So we have minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And when we do all this simplification, we will get the solutions to this quadratic equation. Okay, so I gotta make sure you understand that in, uh, before I tell you what the discriminant is. So if you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I understand all that, that is fantastic. So let's go ahead and answer the question, what is the discriminant? Well, the discriminant is a part of the quadratic formula, and it's this part right here. B squared minus 4AC, this part of the quadratic formula is called the, dis uh, the discriminant, okay? So if you answer that, that is fantastic. I would say I would give you maybe like five out of 10 points on your quiz because now we need to understand what is the discriminant. Well, we have kind of already defined it, but why is it so important? So let's go and talk about that right now. And the discriminant is so important because it tells us the type of roots or solutions we will have, okay? And there's basically three different scenarios. Let's go ahead and take a look at right now. So the discriminant is defined as B squared minus 4AC. And of course, this is this part of the quadratic formula, and it will uh, uh, determine, or okay, or helps us determine or identify what type of solutions that we have. Now, remember, kind of going all the way back up here, that I said that every quadratic equation will have two solutions. Okay. Now, what type of solutions? Well, you could have real number solutions or imaginary solutions or other types, and that's the whole idea behind the discriminant. We can calculate the discriminant. We don't even uh, really need the actual value. What we need to know is the sign. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about this right now. So if the discriminant is a positive number, okay, if the discriminant is greater than zero, meaning that it's a positive number, you will have two real number solutions. And we're gonna look at this graphically real quick, but let's suppose this part of the quadratic formula when, uh, when we're working it, we get the square root of, let's say, 25, a positive 25. So we can take the square root of this positive 25, and this will be equal to positive negative 5, okay? But positive 25 is, it's, it's a positive value. So we're not really concerned about the actual number. We just want, uh, we're concerned about the sign. So if the discriminant, the value of the discriminant is greater than zero, i.e. positive, the entire quadratic equation we'll have two uh, real number solutions. Okay, so what happens if the discriminant is less than zero? In other words, it's negative. Well, in that uh, situation, you will have two imaginary number solutions. So if we kind of go back up here, and we said, okay, we do all our number crunching for b squared minus 4ac, and we end up with a negative 36. Well, in this situation, we're going to uh, have an imaginary number, right? Plus or minus 6i. And you need to understand complex and imaginary numbers because, again, quadratic equations, you're going to always have two solutions. You can have either two real number solutions or imaginary number solutions. So uh, that is that. Now let's go and take a look at the last case. What happens if the discriminant is equal to zero? Well, in this case, you'll have one real root. We call this a double root, okay? Or it's oftentimes referred to as a double root. And we need to... Uh, graphically uh, kind of see the discriminant in action. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. So let's go take that step, which of course is first having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need your support. If these videos are helpful, or if this particular video, if this is your first time to my channel, thanks for checking in. I hope this video is helping you. Certainly if you are an algebra student, uh, you know this uh, video, this is knowledge that you need to know. And uh, if you like this content, well, just know that I have well over 2,000 plus videos 
on my channel from basic math to advanced math, not calculus, and everything in between. And if you need help with algebra, any level of algebra or pre-calculus or any of that type of stuff, uh, check out my full, I'm going to leave links to my full courses in the description. Okay, that's where you're going to get my full course instruction where I cover, you know, you know, really in-depth problems that the kind of stuff that definitely uh, is going to show up on your algebra exams, final exams, quizzes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So anyways, if this material is helping out, please hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit that notification bell as well as so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the discriminant and let's talk about this graphically. All right, now let's make another connection about quadratic equations. What is the general shape of a quadratic function, okay, or a quadratic equation? So if you know the answer to that, uh, go ahead and put that into the comments section. But the general shape of a quadratic equation is a parabola. It's a U-shaped type of deal like this. So you can have a parabola like so, an upward parabola. You can have one that's kind of like upward, but like this. You can have one that's kind of downward like so but you're going to have some sort of U-shape um, graph, and that U-shape graph is called a parabola. So let's make this connection here uh, about the discriminant and uh, its um, relationship or its connection to the graph of a quadratic equation. So if I have a graph, let's say I have a graph of a quadratic equation, and here it is, and let's suppose I want to solve uh, this quadratic equation. Well, graphically, we can see the solutions, okay? The solutions are the x-intercepts. It's the point uh, where the graph crosses the x-axis. So this right here, let's say this is 4, and maybe this is like negative 4 right here, okay? Well, these are two real numbers, so these are two real number solutions. So this would be a situation where the discriminant, okay, is greater than 0, Okay, so if the discriminant is greater than zero, i.e. Uh, there's two real number solutions, that graph will cross through the x-axis. So you need to make the connection between um, uh, real number solutions or just and when you're studying polynomials, of course, you, you start studying polynomial equations. They're like linear equations, quadratic equations. But let's, let's just kind of uh, say I have a third degree polynomial equation. All right. So. This equation here, well, like I, I don't know the solutions. Well, graphically, if this is a polynomial equation, these points here, the x-intercepts, are in fact the real number solutions to that polynomial. Okay, so the same thing holds true. Let's suppose I have a polynomial equation, uh, or not a polynomial equation, a quadratic equation, uh, which of course is a polynomial equation. But let's suppose this is the graph. Now, this is an, uh, a kind of upside-down parabola. So these two points right here would be the real number solution. So again, another situation where the discriminant is positive greater than zero. Okay. So if you're, you know, calculating the discriminant and you and you have to also graph the parabola for that equation, you need to make sure that, hey, yes, this graph is going to have to cross through the x-axis at these points. And these two points right here would be the real number solutions. Okay. So that is that. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, let me get my my x axis my x <laughs> my x axis got messed up here. I can't even say x axis. Let me see if I can fix this up. Ah, right there, that's a little bit better. Okay, so uh, let's talk about when the discriminant uh, is negative. All right, so when the discriminant is negative, it would be a situation like this. Okay, so here is our parabola, or maybe like this, an up, upside down parabola. Here, clearly, the parabola is not crossing the x-axis. So because it's not crossing the x-axis, it has no real number solutions. So these are examples uh, where a quadratic equation will have imaginary, imaginary number solutions. So the discriminant would be uh, less than zero or negative. Okay, so here and here. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Again, remember there's a connection between the graph and the, uh, the type of roots. This is a big, big topic. But you don't have to even graph uh, the quadratic you know, equation that you're trying to solve. You could just look at that discriminant. If you already have your equation in standard form, it's going to go up here real quick. Uh, and I'll get back to this last uh, situation right here. I could just calculate out uh, using the B and uh, need B, A, and C, right? But instead of doing all of the all this work for the quadratic equation, I could just calculate out B squared minus 4AC and be like, okay, is it positive, negative, or zero? That will give me a clue 
on what type of roots. And then, of course, I can finish out the rest of the problem. So when you do uh, solve quadratic equations using a quadratic formula, you want to keep in mind the discriminant. Okay, so let's talk about this last situation right here. When the discriminant is equal to zero, that's one real root or a double root. So that is a uh, situation where the parabola bounces off the x-axis, something like this. Okay, so it's just going to bounce at one point. So let's say this is negative 7, or this right here is uh, 8. Okay, it's bouncing. Now remember, we talked about uh, quadratic equations having two solutions. So what would be the two solutions? Well, x1 would be positive 8, and the second solution would also be positive 8. Okay, so it's one real number, but it represents a double root two solutions. And graphically, uh, you see that when your parabola bounces off the x-axis. And of course, that would be the same situation right here. x is equal to negative 7 and negative 7. Okay, so again, a term that you may not have heard before, the discriminant. Uh, you know, certainly most of you, I'm sure if you are studying algebra, you know, know the quadratic formula or have seen the quadratic formula, but you have to understand the discriminant. And as you progress in mathematics into more advanced math, maybe like college algebra, certainly pre-calculus, this is something that you must master because there's going to be far more kind of complex concepts coming your way when it comes to uh, solving higher order polynomial equations. But uh, if you need assistance with any of this stuff, check out my full course instruction. Uh, my, my That's my first recommendation. My best recommendation is check out my full courses because you're going to get far more than the things I do on YouTube. YouTube, I do a ton of stuff, but they're kind of tutorials and, you know, because I can't really, you know, I do a full, like say a lecture, it's just a little bit too long uh, for YouTube. But hopefully this video did help you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.